Welcome back to The Griot. We are continuing our conversation about mental health. Michelle, of course, has always been vocal about her faith. She even talked about how she gave her life to Christ as a teenager before becoming a music sensation. But what role does spirituality play in mental health? Michelle is back with us now to discuss how her faith helped to get her through her mental health struggles. And I'm also joined again by licensed family therapist, Dr. George James. Michelle, I'm going to start with you. Uh, how did your faith help you deal with depression? Faith was my foundation, meaning when everything around me seemed to crumble, fall apart, that faith was like that concrete slab. It's like when a storm comes and knocks the house down, that con that that slab is still there, right? So I mm. kind of felt like faith is my foundation. Wow. I, I Dr. James, you know, a lot of people, I'm talking about church folk in particular, although I see it in, in the Muslim community, I see it in other faiths as well. I hear a lot of, you don't need no therapist. You better take that to Jesus. What do you say to those people? And what do, how do you respond to that mentality? Because I've seen lots of folk who have been churched their whole life feel as if every time they go to therapy, anytime they talk about you know doing mental health professional work, it's somehow an affront to their faith, that somehow they don't believe that Jesus can heal enough if they're going to Dr. So-and-so. Yeah, you know, Mark, it's actually one of the things that brought me into the field because I saw so many of those people that would just pray only, but not also add their uh, the practicals, the going to the therapist, the going to the counselor. And I'm not saying that they should not pray and just go see a therapist. I actually believe it's both that actually helps people to be at their best self. And so if people can say, I can use my prayer and use the tools that I learned from my therapist. That's when they can actually really work through whatever they're going through at that moment. Well, and Michelle, I think you can testify to that, right? I mean, there's nothing you get from your therapist that contradicts what you get from your faith. Absolutely not. Dr. Anita Phillips freed me a few years ago when she said, prayer is a weapon, therapy is a strategy. Now, mm. now, should we be praying? Absolutely. But after I've had therapy, my prayers are more specific, mm. right? I was in church yesterday where Dr. Darius Daniels was telling us how we can pray amiss, right? It's like you tell people to pray, but you ain't tell them how to pray or what to pray for. So now when I'm in therapy, I know, man, when I get off this session, I got to pray about the posture of my heart. Lord, I got to pray about this anxiety. Lord, you know my triggers. I'm thankful for my therapist, but God, you, you help, you come in my heart. You help me do the digging. You uproot um, this stronghold or you uproot this anger. It's and you can have prayer and therapy. My therapist does not take the place of God in my life. Don't. But I mean, it, my therapist does help. It's like, do you tell the church person who's just got a diagnosis of lupus that you shouldn't go see your, um, the, whatever the specialist is in that field? Do you tell the person that's having complications with their pregnancy, only pray about it. Don't go to your doctor. No, no. I like my psychiatrist and my therapist. I, I, that's what I'm talking about. It, it, <laughs> it, look, I, I feel the, I feel the same way. And, and Dr. James, you can find uh, either clergy who are trained mental health professionals, or you can find trained mental health professionals who also are people of faith who can help you make sense of that stuff, right? Completely. I mean, as we mentioned before, there's a way that you can seek out your preference. So if you want to find a black therapist, you can find that. If you want to find someone that distinguishes themselves as a Christian or a Muslim therapist, you can find that. Now, some of some folks like myself, I will say, look, if you're looking for Bible study, that's where you go to your church and your and your spiritual leader for the Bible study. But if you're looking for someone to say like, hey, you were speaking in tongues and I'm not going to flip out. I'm not going to like say like you need like medication because I can understand that. That's different because that's the, that's the reason why people look for someone that they can connect with is that when you start to say certain things in a certain way, they don't look at you sideways. They don't think that you're weird or crazy. They put it in context because they understand the spiritual world as well as the therapy world. Is it hard, y'all, to, to find someone who fits that? Like a lot of times I've heard people say, I went to therapy and it didn't work. 
Same thing, same thing black people do when they go to black business. They'll go to, they'll go to 50 white restaurants and, and, and complain about the service, but go to another white restaurant. They go to one black business, they'll be like, see, that's why I don't go to black business, and they never go back. I find the same thing with therapy. If people have a, a therapy appointment that didn't go well, they don't therapy shop. They don't look for another therapist. They just leave. How hard is it to find a good therapist that fits you? Uh, Michelle, mm-hmm. I, I, and, and you may have found, a, you, you, you lucky like that. You might have found one on the first try, but is it, is it a journey of, of finding your fit? My therapists have been referrals pe- from people who have gone to the, the therapist themselves or a practitioner who trusts this particular therapist. So mine have been referrals to the point where I've had so much success with my therapist in Illinois, the one I had when I lived in California, and now that I'm in Georgia, the one here, I send so many people to them. I'm like, girl, dude, you need to go to so-and-so. You need to go to so-and-so. Now, the thing is, you have to, some of us, not, this, is, this is not always the case, but this was for me. Sometimes your therapist is going to say something that challenges you. Whew. He or she will say something that challenges you and is to deconstruct some dysfunction possibly. It's not to um, make you more sad. It's not to be judgy. I remember I had one therapist and I was like, she just so judgmental. (laughs) No, you was being a fool, Michelle. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) So that's my experience. But you have had some people who have gone to therapists, Dr. James, who might feel like the person, honestly, they just didn't understand blackness, you know, and there are some therapists who are, who should maybe say, hey, I don't understand, but Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, Dr. James. Now, there is some intergenerational trauma that black people have had that other cultures do not you know, have not had to deal with. But when it comes to like mental health issues and diagnoses, I don't care if you're black, white, whatever. To me, I feel like some of it is the same as it relates to the diagnosis and some of the root of those diagnoses. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. You know, once again, the thought about therapy is a lot of things. Sometimes it's just someone that you can feel comfortable with and talk about whatever is going on. And as Michelle mentioned, sometimes it's that person that's going to ask you those questions that you don't want to answer. And then you leave and then you reflect on the question. And as we said before, and then you pray about the answer to that question. Then it's like, wow, it all starts to unfold. And you come back the next session. I'm like, I like you, but I don't really like you because you asked me some questions that I don't really want to answer. Mm-hmm. Right. That's it's good. just like it's, like it's just like your trainer at the gym, right? I mean, they, they do an important work, but it's grueling work. It's long term work. It's painstaking work. And some days you're going to be mad at them. Sometimes you're going to be cussing. But at the end of the day, you know you're better for it. And that's why we do it. And that's why we encourage everyone to do it. And if you're a person of faith, please believe me. Jesus has answers for you. But one of them answers is go see your therapist.